Australia is the sixth largest country in the world in terms of area, the land down under not only offers 25.8 million people a permanent home, but also some of the most dangerous animals of all. Rich in culture and natural attractions, Australia attracts millions of visitors from all over the world every year. Today, however, we'd like to leave the state's well-known sites aside and take a look at some extraordinary discoveries and landscape formations that leave us in awe with their amazing backstories. Be curious about brightly colored waters, inexplicable symbols, and incomparable natural formations. Let's go! Before we get into it, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more great videos. Also, stick around until the end to hear about the most incredible discovery that has left researchers dumbfounded. Gosford Glyphs there's no question that the Gosford glyphs of New South Wales are visually reminiscent of the famous ancient Egyptian characters, but how is that even possible? Could the mystical symbols provide evidence that the people of the pharaohs set foot on mainland Australia thousands of years ago? It's precisely this question that's repeatedly at the center of heated debates. Thus, the Gosford glyphs are in a region where many aboriginal rock carvings have been found. Therefore, some researchers consider it conceivable that the mysterious signs also emerged 4,500 years ago. What's more, this may actually have been the work of the ancient Egyptians. However, the majority of experts are convinced that the hieroglyphs are nothing more than a modern forgery. The odds of ancient Egyptians making their way to Australia is incredibly slim, and considering the technology that was available to them at the time, as well as the resources that they had, they'd have virtually no reason to venture so far across the globe. Even if they had wanted to, it's unlikely that they would have completed the journey successfully. Wave Rock Anyone who's always wanted to marvel at a 15-meter high wave up close without getting wet is at the right place at Wave Rock. This stunning granite rock formation is estimated to be 2.7 billion years old and is one of Australia's most popular natural attractions due to its impressive proportions. Every year, more than 140,000 curious visitors flock to the region to marvel at the natural structure with their own eyes. However, things are quite different in the ranks of the traditional natives. According to an old legend, a demonic spirit lives here that once hunted small children and even killed his own mother. For this reason, many Aborigines refuse to visit Wave Rock to this day. Lake Hillier it's easy to see why Lake Hillier is also known as the Pink Lake. But what actually gives the body of water its unusual color? Well, this is actually still not clear. The deep pink tone is probably due to the concentration of nutrients in the water and some bacteria and algae. While other unusually colored salt lakes are subject to seasonal fluctuations, Lake Hillier presents its fascinating watercolor all year round. However, if you hope to be able to splash around in the pink-colored water yourself, you should probably think again. The lake is located on Middle Island, and just like all other islands of the Recherche Archipelago, the island may not be entered for nature conservation reasons. Accordingly, Lake Hillier can only be admired from a plane. Marie Mann when bush pilot Track Smith flew over South Australia in 1998, he couldn't believe his eyes. He saw a gigantic dirt drawing from his cockpit, which has since been known as the Marie Man. In detail, the geoglyph has an almost unbelievable size of 2.7 kilometers. If you lined up all the lines, you would get a distance of almost 30 kilometers. The way the lines were carved into the earth suggests this is a modern work of art. But who went to the trouble of making what is arguably the greatest earth drawing of all time? In short, we have no idea. Australian artists, a group of construction workers, or even members of the military are listed as possible authors. Some 
Jesse Bardius Goldberg is the creator of The Marie Man. The artist, who died in 2002, made many smaller Earth drawings during his life. Around the time The Marie Man was most likely made, Goldberg received a hefty cash payment, though he was reluctant to reveal what the transfer was all about. Shell Beach if you find yourself at Shell Beach in Western Australia's Shark Bay, you should think twice about kicking off your shoes. So, we don't find a fine sandy beach here, but a layer of up to 10 meters thick made of billions of shells. In fact, the corresponding mussel species, Fragum irrigatum, is so common in the waters that over the millennia an exceptional number of shells have been washed ashore. While the thousands upon thousands of shells are still lying loosely on top of each other in front of the sea, they've solidified into a coherent layer inland. In fact, this naturally occurring building material has been used in the past to build a church and other buildings. Thylacine Whether it's the mighty saltwater crocodile, the highly venomous inland taipan, or the dreaded Sydney funnel web spider, Australia's biodiversity is as frightening as it is impressive. However, given the myriad of creatures that roam down under, we should not forget that some animals disappeared from Australia over time, including the thylacine. The last living specimen of the largest predatory marsupials died in 1936. Since then, the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, has been considered extinct. The animals, which are around 60 centimeters high and weigh 19 kilograms, presumably mainly hunted small kangaroos, possums, and rodents. The thylacine was once the largest marsupial to roam the Earth, having lived around 4 million years ago up until the early 1900s. The last living thylacine was captured in 1933 near Tasmania, and the species has never been seen since. These animals were known for being shy and nocturnal, with an appearance like a dog. However, these animals also had characteristics of a kangaroo, as they had abdominal pouches and stiffened tails. The closest relative of a thylacine is believed to be a Tasmanian devil or a numbat. It's assumed that these animals died off after dogs took over their natural habitats and humans began to hunt them. The most interesting fact about these animals is that we have film footage of them from 1911, 1928, and 1930. This footage was filmed at various zoos before the animals died off completely. The thylacine certainly appears to have behaved very similarly to a dog, even though the two species are not related. Resurrecting the species has been posed by many scientists, considering that the Tasmanian devil is so genetically similar. However, no successful efforts have been made. Until the beginning of the 19th century, the thylacine was still widespread in Tasmania. However, after sheep were introduced to Australia, the predators soon gained a reputation as bloodthirsty beasts. Wrongly so, modern 3D simulations show that the thylacine's jaws were actually much too weak to tear down sheep. The animals that died back then were probably due to feral dogs. However, since people knew nothing of these backgrounds, the thylacine was systematically hunted down and eventually exterminated. Attempts to save the species in the zoo were unsuccessful. In all that time, there was only one litter in captivity. Nevertheless, isolated sightings of the thylacine are still reported today. However, these cannot be proven unequivocally. In March 2017, two separate sightings in northern Queensland made headlines. And who knows, maybe some of these fascinating animals actually managed to defy the merciless hunt of humans. Ball's Pyramid Officially, the rocky island of Ball's Pyramid is uninhabited. In 2001, however, researchers made an amazing discovery on the 560-meter-high massif in the middle of the sea, a tree lobster. At first, finding an insect doesn't seem particularly exciting. However, this changes abruptly when we consider that this species of stick insect was considered extinct until it was rediscovered. As early as 1920, the population of 
crawling animals had been reduced so dramatically that they were practically nowhere to be found. Incidentally, the island is the relic of an ancient volcano that formed seven million years ago. Cooper no matter how fascinating Australia's fauna may seem today, the modern inhabitants of Down Under are nothing compared to the monstrous behemoth that roamed the land 95 million years ago. In fact, the researchers in Australia came across the bones of a dinosaur that effortlessly overshadows all previous finds. With a length of 30 meters and a hip height of 6 meters, Australotitan Cooperensis has earned the nickname the Colossus from the Cretaceous. This makes the imposing herbivore the largest known land animal in Australia, and it's also one of the largest dinosaurs in history. At the time when Cooper walked our globe, today's Australia was still part of the greater continent of Gondwana. Ryugu a few years ago, the Japanese space agency JAXA carried out a very challenging project. As part of the Hayabusa 2 mission, an unmanned space mission was sent to the asteroid Ryugu. After the cosmic missile had been examined and photographed in detail, the unmanned spacecraft took some soil samples from the astronomical small body, which were then to be brought to Earth. The corresponding capsule finally landed at the aerospace test site in southern Australia. By examining the 4.6 billion year old material, scientists hoped to glean important insights into the early days of the solar system and the origins of life. And indeed, over 10 different types of amino acids have been detected in the galactic rock. Uluru among the Aborigines, Uluru is considered an important natural sanctuary. For international tourists, the island mountain in the central Australian desert is a popular destination that's visited by hundreds of thousands every year. In 2019, the indigenous people finally managed to get a ban on mountaineering. Fatal accidents had occurred time and again during the ascent. By the time the route was closed, 37 fatalities had been reported. However, this is not the only danger that's posed by the 860-meter-high and 550-million-year-old Uluru. Many tourists insist on taking home natural souvenirs in the form of small stones. Mysteriously, some visitors reported that tragedy had followed them ever since. According to Aboriginal belief, this is because taking such memorabilia with you arouses the wrath of the spirits that dwell in Uluru. So it happens that many tourists later decide to send their souvenirs back to the Inselberg. The sign of regret is actually meant to help end the inexplicable streak of bad luck. When we think of cursed objects, the first images that come to mind are bizarre masks, spooky dolls, or chilling ancient jewelry. But who would have thought that a diabolical evil entity would also reside in a simple stone? When Steve Hill went on a trip to the majestic Uluru in the Australian desert a few years ago, he probably wasn't thinking of bad luck or dark forces. Forces, Steve decided to embellish his fascinating day trip by taking a small souvenir with him, a rock. However, after the Australian had packed the stone keepsake, his previously normal life was to be completely turned upside down. In fact, it seemed as if Steve had taken a streak of bad luck home with him along with the Uluru stone. What followed were weeks in which Steve made one fatal mishap after another. After he was finally involved in a traffic accident in which he crashed his car and nearly lost his life, he decided to bring the stolen stone back to Uluru. It sounds crazy, but it's completely true. From that day on, Steve's losing streak had come to an end. Particularly noteworthy is that the Australian is not the only one who experienced such a strange story. In truth, every year a few stones are brought back to the majestic Uluru area to end the inexplicable unlucky curses of the owners. Alright folks, now your opinion matters. What do you think of the fascinating sights that Australia has to offer? Have you ever been down under yourself? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and comments about today's video in the comments below. Please also give us a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Thank you for watching, have a good one, and see you next time.